Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Med where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In this video, we will be covering part two of our antibiotics crash course where we will complete the full beta-lactam series. In part one, we discussed penicillins and in this video, we will be going over cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactam. We'll start with an in-detail discussion of the different generations of cephalosporin and then end with a summary and as always, a practice question to solidify your understanding. All right, let's go over some basics. In our first video, we discussed beta-lactamases, which are enzymes produced by bacteria, allowing them to be resistant to certain beta-lactam antibiotics. In comparison to penicillin, cephalosporins have a higher resistance to beta-lactamases overall, rendering them to be more effective. They also have better anti-staphylococcal activity, which we discussed was an issue with certain penicillins. And then just keep in mind these general rules. Cephalosporins do not cover Listeria, your atypicals like Chlamydia and Mycoplasma, MRSA, and Enterococci. And you can remember these organisms with the acronym LAME. And then as you move down generations, so from your first generation to your fifth generation, you're generally going to have more gram-negative coverage. So with that in mind, let's start with our first generation cephalosporins, your cefazolin and cephalexin, and just keep in mind that the root of administration is going to be listed right next to the name of each antibiotic. These antibiotics have excellent gram-positive coverage, particularly when it comes to staph and strep, but not MRSA here, so keep that in mind, and they also offer some minor gram-negative coverage. If you've ever been in the operating room, you've probably noticed that cefazolin is often used for prophylaxis during surgery because it covers for the more common organisms that you can find with surgical skin infections. For our second generation cephalosporins, we have cefuroxime, cefoxetin, and cefotitan, and these antibiotics offer more gram-positive and more gram-negative coverage than your first-generation antibiotics. With that being said, however, cefoxetin and cefotitan, which are both IV, both offer unreliable gram-positive coverage, so they're better for your anaerobes and gram-negatives. Make sure to keep this in mind because these are the only two antibiotics from your cephalosporin class that provide anaerobic coverage. And now we have our third-generation antibiotics, which are your ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, cefpodoxime. These offer excellent gram-negative coverage, but remember, not anaerobic coverage. Of the three, you'll probably see ceftriaxone used most often because it is used in many situations, such as with community-acquired pneumonia along with macrolide, as well as with meningitis for CSF penetration. Let's now discuss the only two cephalosporins that cover pseudomonas, ceftazidime and cefepime. Ceftazidime is a third-generation cephalosporin, and cefepime is your only fourth-generation cephalosporin. We'll start with ceftazidime, which provides only gram-negative coverage. It does not cover any gram-positives or any anaerobes. On the other hand, cefepime offers gram-negative coverage as well as broad gram-positive coverage, which would include your staph and strep, but not MRSA here. However, it does offer weak anaerobic coverage, so it's not used to cover for anaerobes. Because of its broader coverage, cefepime is often preferred out of the two, and so you'll probably see this used more often in a hospital setting. And last but not least, we have ceftaroline, which is our fifth-generation cephalosporin and also our newest cephalosporin. It has excellent gram-positive coverage, including coverage against MRSA, and if you'll notice, this makes it the only cephalosporin with activity against MRSA. It also has pretty decent gram-negative coverage and is similar to ceftriaxone. All right, so that summarizes your cephalosporins. Let's now go over carbapenems, which is another class of beta-lactam antibiotics. This includes your imipenem and ertapenem, and they come in an IV form only. Carbapenems are your broadest spectrum antibiotics because they cover a wide range of things, including your gram positives, gram negatives, including pseudomonas except for ertapenem, extended spectrum beta-lactamases, and anaerobes. Carbapenems are actually your best antibiotic of choice against ESBL organisms. For this class of antibiotics, it's easier to remember what it does not cover, which are your MRSA, VRE or vancomycin-resistant enterococci, and your atypicals. And for our final beta-lactam antibiotic class, we have our monobactam, which includes estreonam, and this comes in an IV form. Estreonam only has coverage against gram-negatives, it has no coverage against gram-positives or anaerobes, and so this makes it very similar to ceftazidime. With your cephalosporins, you have more gram-negative coverage as you move down the generations. Only cefoxetin and cefotitin have good anaerobic coverage. And only ceftazidime and cefepime cover pseudomonas. And keep in mind that your carbapenems are your broadest spectrum antibiotics. Let's now go over a practice question. Here we have a 42-year-old woman who was brought to the emergency department for seizures that began 10 minutes prior to presentation with no clear precipitating cause. She is diagnosed with generalized tonic-clonic seizure, and despite receiving appropriate treatment, her seizures do not abort. 
She is intubated, given propofol, and is admitted to the medical intensive care unit. On hospital day three, she is difficult to wean from anticonvulsants and remains intubated. Her temperature is 101 degrees Fahrenheit, blood pressure is 138 over 99, pulse is 101, and respirations are 19 with an oxygen saturation of 89%. Physical examination is notable for crackles on the right anterior chest, and a chest radiograph demonstrates a right lung lobar consolidation. Blood and sputum cultures are obtained. Which of the following antibiotics would be most appropriate at this time? So this is a two-part question here where you have to determine the diagnosis and then the treatment. So here we have a patient who began developing a fever, became tachycardic, and started having a low oxygen saturation on day three of her hospitalization, so more than 48 hours. She's also found to have crackles on exam as well as a right lung low bar consolidation on x-ray. So this meets the criteria of pneumonia, but specifically hospital-acquired pneumonia. What differentiates hospital-acquired pneumonia from community-acquired pneumonia is the organism. So here you really want to cover for pseudomonas. So we need to administer an antibiotic that will cover against pseudomonas from the answer choices. And of all the answer choices, the only antibiotic that will cover for pseudomonas is cefepime. So your answer here is C. All right, everyone, we hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions or other topics that you'd like covered. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.